All right. Hey, everybody. JMFW Worldwide. We're going to talk real quick about the Worldwide Spoon. We're going to talk about spoon jacking. We're going to talk about the rod reel and why this spoon has been more effective. And I've been waiting so long to get finally designed to perfection. This Worldwide Spoon is different. Now, I'm going to show you something. This is the spoon I used to throw a lot. And I loved it. Don't get me wrong. But let's compare the two real quick. You can see that my spoon is a little bit wider and, and a little bit differently cupped in the rear. Now, why is that? Well, because this spoon right here was good for spoon jack and boat docks. Also good out on ledges. But I wanted a spoon that had better rear trajectory. And what I mean by that is when the old spoon used to hit the water, it kind of fall down left and right and fall all over the place, but it wouldn't go backwards as good as I wanted it to. All right, what's great about the worldwide spoon and what took us uh, such a long time to get out and perfect it is, I want this spoon to hit the water and fall backwards, all right? So the rear trajectory for about every foot of fall downward, it's going backward. So as it's falling, it's moving, shucking and jiving, and it's falling backwards. So I can actually flip it in the front stall of a boat dock with a lifted boat in it. It hits the water here, and it ends up way the heck over underneath that boat dock towards the walkway. So the most novice angler can put this on the front edge of the boat dock slip and it ends up getting in the shaded part of the boat dock. That's what makes this River to Sea Worldwide Spoon so special. You know, again, nothing wrong with this, but it would hit the water and it would go like this. Mine hits the water and it goes over here down. So that's the best way I could describe that to you. Also, some great features about this is we put a beefed up river to sea hook in it. Got great split rings. We've got the uh, really cool swivel on it. I don't even know the name of that swivel, but it's, it's awesome. And more importantly, I've got a stinger hook attached, a braided line stinger hook attached and ready to go out of the package. Now, why is that? Well, it's not only for you to get hung up on stuff, but more importantly, it's for you to have that opportunity to catch more than one bass at a time. A lot of times, you'll flip that in there more times than, than I could even count. I'll flip my spoon in and it's falling slowly, slowly. It's going down there. It stops. I set the hook. I got him. I pull him up. He's got one, two, 50 bass with him. And they're all fighting that bass trying to take that plug or that lure out of that fish's mouth. And they're running up there. And before you know it, you've now caught you another fish on that stinger hook. And sometimes you just catch them on that stinger hook and the other one runs up and he eats the back hook. So many, many times you'll see when you get in that scenario, when you're spoon jacking, especially deep boat docks, you'll see that your opportunity to hook and catch more than one bass at a time are great because that stinger hook's there and you're going to do it. You're going to actually hook two bass, reel them in, have a good time. It's pretty awesome. But that is the breakdown on the River to Sea spoon and what makes it better than your other normal spoons made by other companies. We got great paint jobs on these things. We've got the chrome and blue. We've got a white one. Now, now why white? I don't know why white works so good, but on Highland uh, reservoirs like Table Rock Lake, clear water reservoirs, a white spoon, especially later in the summer or, or fall, a white spoon is deadly for whatever reason. I don't do worth a crap on it any other time except in the uh, early and late fall. Otherwise, I'm going with the chrome, straight chrome or a blue chrome or straight, straight chrome like that. Uh, these weigh roughly one ounce. You can see it right there. These are great for suspended bass, okay, because it's not a real fast fall. Now, if you're out there and you want to you wanna get on the bottom, this is probably not the spoon for you, all right? 
if if you're a bass are on high current ledges you know a lot of fast current moving water this ain't the spoon for you okay if you're out over treetops and you're dropping on treetops or throwing it out over treetops and you're working it this spoon's for you this is a great spoon for that now the line's really important even in clear clear water like table rock lake lake of the ozarks is a little bit dirtier clear water lakes table rock beaver all right dirt a little dirtier water like grand lake um lake of the ozarks all these lakes i mentioned i've caught a lot of big bags on with the spoon i go with 20 pound fluorocarbon and sometimes especially lake of the ozarks especially grand lake i go with 25 pound fluorocarbon i don't want hardly any stretch and i want a super super strong line that i could really jack them bass once they hit it i use and i'm designing a little bit different uh rod with caching i use a seven and a half foot flipping stick it's the same one i'll throw a whopper plopper on except we're going to design a little bit better rod that's going to be just a little bit faster tip for spoon jacking than the than a standard flipping stick i use a seven to one gear ratio i like a pro qualifier this is a very inexpensive reel but it holds a lot of line but again you're talking about a seven to five gear ratio the new pro qualifiers are seven to five gear ratio 20 pound to 25 pound fluorocarbon super fast takes up a lot of line it holds a lot of line the main reason i want it to hold a lot of line is this when you're doing this technique all day long after a couple hours of this i don't care how many swivels you have or what you think about other spoons and so on this line starts to curl and just being honest with you so i want it i want to uh, carry a lot of line and multiple if i'm going to do it all day long i have two or three of these reels set up and when you break off sometimes you'll break off and lose a lot of line and once you start losing that line you're you're not getting your spoon as deep as you want because you don't have enough line on your spool so big spool like this fast seven plus gear ratio reel seven and a half foot pretty stiff rod you want a little bit of a tip more than my flipping sticks got and you can really lean on them bass but try that out. It works good all summer long, all over your clear water bodies of water. Now, spoon jack and boat docks is, is the best in sunny, sunny conditions. Not so much on shady conditions. Here's why. They use that boat dock for shade. And when you're fishing, I, I talk about this in, uh, in seminars and stuff when I talk about spoon jacking. And you've probably heard this before if you've been to a seminar I've been at. But I play the shade. If, if I'm pitching boat docks at 9 o'clock in the morning and I get a bite, I'll make a waypoint on that particular boat dock. If I'm coming back through that boat dock at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, there's an obvious thing's taking place. The shade was on this side of the boat dock at 8 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, the shade's on that side of the boat dock. So you want to play the shade on that. It's very, very important. It's not like running bank and looking for those shaded areas on the bank. It's, it's a little bit more complex than that. So play the shade. They might be in that boat dock stall at 8 o'clock in the morning, but they won't be there at 2 o'clock because the shade's already drifted over to this other side of the boat dock. So play the shade. That's very, very important. Now, I like this one-ounce uh, worldwide spoon because... It's great for suspended bass. I flip my spoon in there and I'm free spooling. I'm letting the line kick off my reel, all right? I'm not doing anything. If you've ever seen it on TV and I'm doing it, you, you it's like I just flip it in there and I'm just sitting there. Well, I'm not. The line's going because my spoon's shooting back and it's falling down and it's going. And I'm just, really, I'm counting in my head how far is that thing going to fall before I get a bite or I pay attention. It's like, oh man, them fish are super deep, suspended down there deep. Or hey, they're just five foot under the under the boat dock itself. So pay attention to all those things. And that's what makes this great, uh, this bait so great for suspended bass. You know, if the bass are down there on bottom, well, guess what? We're gonna make a bigger worldwide spoon. It's coming. We're gonna make a ounce and a half version when I get done, uh, hopefully designing that with, uh, 
Simon at River to Sea, we'll have one that gets to the bottom faster than this one. This is great for suspended bass, clear water boat docks, deep, deep, deep water, and they don't have to be on bottom. They're generally suspended anywhere from five to 35 foot.